Hello and welcome Universe Mode. This is Raw. Don't even bother telling me what I summoned for the day. Yeah, that's the one. Anyway, we are here in Honolulu, Lululu, Hawaii for uh, the continuation for the third week of the Dower Royale. And tonight it will be the Women's Championship being defended because we talked that we had seen uh, rumblings about it last week and indeed that match has been granted. Tonight's main event will feature Rosemary getting a shot for that championship against the women's champion Paige. Rosemary demanded this title shot of course last week or rather Mordecai did. The, uh, it was granted and because of that, that is your main event for here for tonight. Paige going to be looking to defend that championship against a woman who seems to have a bit of a grudge with her and called her the disease of the women's division last week. We'll see what's going to happen when they fight it, when they fear off in the main event. But as for now, we're going to kick things off with a no holds barred match between Aiden English and Triple H. So here we go, kicking things off now with this no holds barred match. Due to what happened last week on Raw, <clears throat> if you did not see it, then um, let me to fill in the blanks for you. Last week, uh, Triple H was supposed to fight Aiden, uh, Cody Rhodes even in a one-on-one -on -one matchup, but Aiden English came out and attempted to spoil the uh, the party from happening. The uh, the artist that he now goes by um, attempted to disrupt the match and attack Triple H from behind for whatever reason, probably for revenge for uh, what took place at Over the Limit, but that did not turn out to be so successful with Triple H uh, retaliating and dumping Aiden English on his head with a pile driver then going backstage and demanding a matchup uh, th at this time of course last week um, with a with a with Aiden English on the next episode of Raw so here we are the Royal manager has confirmed that match taking place and of course here we are no holds barred something tells me though that even though this is a no holds barred match I don't think it's going to have the same level of um of hatred, animosity, and I don't think it's going to be as good as a match as the uh, the No Holds Barred match we saw a little bit ago ended up being. Of course, you already know what I'm making reference to, and um, you know that was the greatest, one of the greatest No Holds Barred matches I think we've ever seen in this universe. This will not be that. In English, still looking to build um, confidence within himself, really still looking to make a name for himself on this brand. It's been a tough time for Aiden English, you know, especially without Simon Gotch as of late. But it seems as if Aiden English has embraced a new kind of persona to him in Simon Gotch's absence. And here comes the game. On his way to the ring now, ready to uh, extract a measure of revenge for his matchup with Cody Rhodes being thrown out last week. This is why you do not piss off the game. You knock it on the wrong side of Triple H or you will face the consequences. I think Aiden English is going to be getting that 100% here tonight. Triple H since his return at uh, Over the Limit has certainly been attempting to get his name back out there. Chuck himself in a championship position probably more than likely. And uh, he achieved, of course, upon his return, he defeated Aiden English. Two weeks ago, he beat Brian Pillman. Last week, it seems, was a real test for Triple H following his return. Of course, Aiden English played spoiler on that, as I've already discussed. Now, here tonight, Triple H plays spoiler on allowing Aiden English to have a, a successful career, or at least a victory, over the game. Triple H determined to uh, cause some damage here tonight to Aiden English. It is going to be... One hell of a, a beatdown is the way I'm viewing it. English can be brimming with confidence all he wants, but it is going to bite him in the ass very, very quickly. That much I think I can guarantee. I don't see him standing much of a chance against the cerebral assassin that is Triple H. And Triple H is done now, having his entrance. He's not going to let, let, well, just stand around anymore. And continue to put on that act. He is going right for Aiden English now. But English. Oh, Tornado DDT. And I think Triple H's head may have slammed into the steps. But Triple H, they're quick to respond. And into the steps goes Aiden English. What will the game look for? Well, it is no DQ. So he might as well. Triple H with a steel chair in hand. Aiden English into the ring. And oh, right on the head. Right on the money. 
Triple H now. A little bit of a receipt for last week as well. Another pile driver for Aiden English to endure. Beautiful stuff already. Triple H in the driver's seat. And this matchup has barely gone underway. Back out of the ring now goes the game once more. And it's an old friend on his way. The Sledgehammer. Aiden English already fallen to the wrath of the Sledgehammer. Aiden English though, slamming the Sledgehammer into Triple H. The game does not feel the effect of that one. It's flying back there with that clothesline. Triple H now backbreaker there to English. What is he thinking now? The game perhaps plotting his next move. Waiting for English to get up, I would imagine. Steel, uh, sorry, Sledgehammer in hand. And oh, again though, Aiden English able to play possum for long enough. But Triple H is able to respond just as quickly. The game already leaving one hell of a impact on two. Poor Aiden English, spine buster there. Aiden English's arse landing on the chair. And it hasn't taken long. And all they get announced table, that thankfully I don't sit at, is going to be... Uh, Staying around in this um, arena for too much longer. On the outside they are now. Triple H though countered by English. What a neck break on the outside. And English still got some fight left in him it seems. Not too sure why he's going for a submission. It might be no holds barred but it's not false count anyway. And Triple H easily able to get out of it as well. Aiden English almost slamming his head onto the monitor. Nice dodge there by English. Uh-oh. Well, this is exactly where you didn't want to be. And this is now where he is. Triple H with English in his grasp. Pedigree through the table. And that, I think, is uh, a measure of revenge for last week. Aiden English thrown in the ring. I don't think he's going to be kicking out of this one. Cover here by Triple H. That should have done the job already. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Triple H with a dominant, dominant victory there over an Aiden English. Was there ever really going to be another kind of outcome to this matchup, though? I think not. Chalk another one up for Triple H as he now puts Aiden English behind him and focuses on what is next for the game. And what is next for Triple H may indeed be money in the bank. If I was the Raw General Manager, I honestly would put Triple H on the Money in the Bank ladder match. Aiden English, meanwhile, I'd probably put him in anywhere but Raw right now, to be fair. It's not, off to, it is not going well for Aiden English, it seems. Uh, being away from Simon Gotch, not, not doing him any good. Triple H, however, with another solid victory as he looks ready and determined to get his name back up into the top the top peak of, uh, of Monday Night Raw. Not on a Monday. But anyway, there you go. Triple H celebrates his win there. Job done for the game. And now we're going to move, up, move on to our next contest. It's the final qualifying match of the Triple Threat Tournament. Coming up next, Charlotte, Oscar, and Becky Lynch square off to find out who will be joining Alexa Bliss and Alicia Fox in that other, in the course of the Triple Threat match next week. Next. Too many next. All right, things may have gone a little calmer around here. Now it is time to focus on the women's matchup, and first out comes the Nature Girl. I think that's a, one of her nicknames, I'm not too sure, but anyway. Charlotte heads towards the ring right now, still looking for a win here on Monday Night Raw. I guess that's what has assisted with the Triple Threat Tournament. Rankings did not matter in this one. It was just all about who could get, well, everyone was granted an opportunity. In fact, every woman has been granted an opportunity on this brand in some way or another at a shot of the Women's Championship because you got Rosemary later on tonight going after that uh, Women's Championship and of course the only other woman on this brand then is Maurice but as of right now she is a valet for The Miz not a wrestler but anyway here is Charlotte still got the uh, attitude to her that could, pass it, that could get her through this matchup and on to victory however I would think that the favourite in this matchup is Becky Lynch and I will, uh, of course, talk more about her when she makes her way out because we cannot forget about Asuka. The hard-hitting woman that she is. Asuka's been uh, 
the 50-50 to be fair since, joy since coming on the Monday Night Raw, but it is, uh, I suppose, one of these things that just happens. But there, here she is, the Empress of Tomorrow, as she puts, as she uh, calls herself, Asuka. Looking to get that opportunity, looking to go on to become a future number one contender for the Women's Championship, looking to try and challenge the Bullet Club, and more specifically, of course, Paige. Even though Paige has a matchup later on tonight, I can tell you now, as a, of course, you know, being the um, one of the spokespeople for the Bullet Club that I am, uh, that uh, Paige is playing is paying. Wow close attention to this matchup here tonight as she realizes that it's especially Oscar and Becky can be a threat to a championship. She knows what both are capable of and she admits that Oscar is perhaps the one she's most afraid of, especially this is one of the last times these two women squared off. Oscar knocked Paige out with a, a hard head kick. Will that happen later on? Will that uh, hard head kick be coming into play in this matchup? And Will Asuka get to use it on uh, Paige at some point down the line? We'll uh, eventually find out, but as for right now, Asuka is ready to try and win this triple threat matchup. But here comes, as I said, the favorite, Becky Lynch. The first time we've seen her since Over the Limit. And of course, Becky Lynch must have been devastated in her mind by what happened at Over the Limit when it was revealed that Paige was a member of the Bullet Club. And now, here. Becky Lynch looks to try and bounce back from that, looks to try and get a victory and get her hands back on Paige. Becky Lynch, I believe, has labelled what happened a travesty, stating that once and for all the Bullet Club needs to be brought down a peg and Paige needs her ego trimmed as well. She's only beaten Becky once. Becky still has enough victories over her that she can do it again and do it again comfortably. Becky Lynch believes that she is more than able to win this triple threat matchup, I would assume. And we'll see if she can pull that off here as this matchup is about to get underway. There's Charlotte, perhaps the underdog in this one. Oscar, maybe the one to watch, and the favorite Becky Lynch. First woman to grab a pinfall wins. We saw Alicia Fox defeat Maria and Carmella two weeks ago. We saw Alexa Bliss defeat... Uh, uh, who was it? Wow. I'm actually blanking on who it was. That's pretty bad. It was Gail Kim, who she actually got the pin on, to my knowledge. And no, it wasn't. It was Emma, who she got the pin on. And, of course, Gail Kim. Charlotte right now, off to a nice start there. Fine, it's carry into a backpack stunner. Becky Lynch goes down. Oscar with a tremendous reversal, though. Very nicely done there. Harakarana. And Oscar, of course, walks around that ring barefooted. And it just adds to the, the the pain of her kicks, really, when they do strike in the head. And here they come. Asuka unloading now with kicks into the chest of Charlotte. Akin to Daniel Bryan, only not as boring. Good counter there by Becky Lynch as she hits a drop kick of her own. And Asuka going to quickly retaliate there, go to the outside, just relax. Catch her breath, still early days in this matchup. Elbow drop into the leg there by Charlotte, who's taken apart the... Uh, the turnbuckle pad there, trying to gain any advantage she can as is one of her father's signature maneuvers. A little bit of a chop there for Becky Lynch, but Becky quick to fight back. Knee in the face. Charlotte goes down. An uppercut there for Asuka. Down she goes as well as she immediately gets back in the ring. Leg drop here. Asuka in a lot of trouble right now. Double leg drop by Becky Lynch. Crucifix there. Charlotte down and going to retreat to the outside here. Becky Lynch now at Asuka. Squaring off in the ring, and Asuka is going to use that. Oh, the use the ring pole to her advantage. Anything goes in this matchup, and Asuka using that term literally with that move. But there, can she gain a strong advantage now over Becky Lynch? And is still waiting to find out. Nice drop kick there by Lynch. Locking the arm in there as she hits that reverse DDT. Charlotte having a bit of trouble here. It's kind of between Oscar and Becky for momentum in this matchup right now. And finally, Becky Lynch rolls outside of the ring. That gives Oscar all the time she needs, really, to put a number on Charlotte. But Charlotte, good to fight. Oh, strong to fight back. But uh, left herself a little exposed and got really thumped in the head. Oscar now, or oh, basically stepped, or jumped, really, and stomped on the head. 
of Charlotte. Here we go now. Dangerous times for Charlotte. There's a running bum attack. Everyone in a bit of trouble here. Oscar looked like she was winding something up there for Paige. And oh, there's a counter. Looked like the Bexplex was on its way. One of the ex oh, one of the uh, exploding Bexplexes. And it was a great job there by Oscar to counter it. And once more, Charlotte gets up to her feet and is in trouble again. Oscar with that running bum attack. Does Oscar have... Uh-oh, Oscar doesn't have anyone's number right now. What an exploder suplex there by Becky Lynch. Taking her for a ride, and Lynch now going to look for the pin on Charlotte. Will it advance it next week? We'll find out. No, Charlotte had enough time and was able to kick out a two. Oscar recovering on the outside here. Quick to get up to her feet. What a reversal there by Charlotte. Can she get some momentum going here? Oh. Porter there, Oscar once more was very prone for that kick, but Charlotte with a spear to send down the Empress of Tomorrow. Becky Lynch though, jumping right back in on the action, but it's a great counter by Charlotte, but it's a great counter by Becky as well. And Charlotte able to counter back once more. These two women go back and forth right now as Oscar tries to recover. Great work there by Becky to get out of it, and a loaded forearm there, corked Oscar an absolute, uh, sorry, Charlotte an absolute beauty. And leaves Oscar and Becky alone in the ring now. Who's going to get the, uh, who's going to benefit from this? Looks like it's going to be Oscar cross arm breaker here for Becky Lynch. Will Becky be forced to submit? No, it looks like Becky's getting out of it. The former women's champion able to fight on there. We've seen Becky's resiliency tested before. I don't know what Asuka was thinking there, but uh, she certainly didn't kick anything. Oh, speaking of kicking something, running big boot there, and Charlotte floors both women. Amazing work there by Charlotte as she got back in the ring, and once more, momentum swings another way. This time, Charlotte firmly getting her hands on some momentum there. Can she get the pin on Becky now in advance to ne next week? Maybe so. No, it's a two count. Oscar was aware of that. You saw her spring up to her feet. Oscar was worried for sure. Becky Lynch now in a bit of trouble. Oscar may have a right where she wants. Oh, okay. Everyone just kind of propping up to do something right now. It's just complete insanity in this matchup. Becky Lynch looked like she was ready to perhaps go for a disarmor. That didn't happen. Charlotte now launching Becky Lynch by her hair. Lynch going to roll out of the ring here. That leaves Oscar and Charlotte all alone. Spinning kick in the gut now. And Oscar prepping up for the Oscar lock. She got it. She got Charlotte locked in it. Can Charlotte get to the ropes? They're just behind her. Will Charlotte be able to force the break? She will not. It is, it is uh, almost like last week. One rolls to the outside, and that leaves an advantage for one of the women in the match to capitalize, and this one was Asuka. The Asuka lock forced the tap out there of Charlotte. And the Empress of Tomorrow advances to that triple threat next week. So we will see Alicia Fox, Alexa Bliss, and Asuka, triple A, taking over that triple threat next week. Well, there we go. Good win there for Oscar. Can she uh, use this to her advantage next week and become the number one contender for the women's championship? We'll find out. I, I'm uh, I'm interested now by that triple threat next week, and who knows who can walk out of that one victorious? And now we're going to move on to our next contest. Memory serves me correct, I believe. It's um. I'll tell you what it is. It's a match I don't remember. I actually, no, I don't remember it. It's something. And it's up next. Okay, I've been reminded um, by uh, by those in the back. It is Christian going to be taking on someone. Christian has um, don't know why I said it like that. That sounded stupid. Christian anyway has um, frustrated about his loss to Zack Ryder at Over the Limit. I would be too if I realized I had to wake up one day every day and realize I lost to Zack Ryder. But um, Christian looking to he is determined to bounce back from that loss and turn it into a win here tonight. So he has challenged absolutely anyone 
It's basically, it's a cock is what it is. It's the Christian Open Challenge. And he has challenged, and he has told anyone can step up to the plate and try and get the win over Captain Charisma. This is probably not a smart idea but, uh, from Christian, to be fair. This is not exactly something I would advise him doing, but uh, it's apparently something he does want to go ahead with, despite his recent string of losses that he seems to be suffering time and time again. So let's see what happened here. Let's see if Christian can build on some of that momentum that he had at, um, at Over the Limit and turn it into a strong win here tonight for Captain Charisma. Obviously, I don't know who's going to step up to the plate. I would like to confirm right now no one in the Bullet Club is going to be there. Um, uh, you're only going to see two people at the Bullet Club here tonight, and that is the World Heavyweight Champion, Dolph Ziggler, who we'll be hearing from a little later on tonight. Bless, Bless SB, and of course, Paige, who we will be seeing in the main event. The Good Brothers and Adam Cole, not here tonight. They'll, um, they'll be on Raw, I assume, I hope, next week. But anyway, who is stepping up to the, who is stepping up to the plate here? Oh my goodness. Oh. Oh my. Well. The fact that it could be anyone. That invitation has certainly been accepted. The Undertaker is on Raw. The last time we saw Taker was on NXT. And now the Lord of Darkness is, is back on Raw. Good God. I didn't know if we'd see the day again, but Undertaker is here, and he is ready to... to I, I'm genuinely quite stunned by this. I don't know exactly what to say right now, but here is the Phenom, and Undertaker is ready to make one hell of a return to Monday Night Raw by taking out Christian. This is going to be an entertaining one to watch. What, genuinely, what a pick. What a, uh, a move there by Daro and Arlo in order to achieve this. The Undertaker is now a Raw superstar once more on this brand where he won the WWE title and the World Tag Team title. This is something else. He, uh, Christian, I would assume. If I was Christian, I wouldn't bother. I'd run. I would, I would just not even bother to try here. Because anything you attempt is going to be futile. Because the Undertaker is here once more on Monday Night Raw. Good God, the last time we saw him, he had one incredible matchup against Okada. The NXT Champion will be seeing defending that championship at TakeOver in just a few days' time. But it was something else. Undertaker's career was revitalized on NXT and Monday Night Raw was aware of this and made the most impressive bid I assume for The Undertaker and have acquired his services here on Raw. The dead man is back. And he's going to take it to Christian here tonight upon his return. Christian just unable to get a move in right now. What a clothesline there by the Phenom. What will Undertaker's role be here on Raw? Because he's certainly already even just thinking about his, the impact he could make here. This is kind of the, the anti, the antithesis even. To the Brood's leader of Mordecai. That certainly makes it a little bit more interesting as to what to think about that. But Undertaker right now all over Christian. Similar to how uh, it was the case between, oh god, Aiden English and Triple H earlier. Taker now, choke slam. And I think Christian may be done for already. Undertaker, not even resorting to the tombstone. He has him here, lifts him up in the air, and for Christian, it's the last ride. Good God Almighty. One, two, three. No, Christian kicks out. Christian with a little bit of fight left in him, apparently, as he... Kicks out there at the cat of two. And Undertaker now, unable to get something going there. Can Christian somehow fight back now? All right, well, it was, it was worth the sentence. We just get to see more of Undertaker's dominance here being shown to us all. 
Christian has floor taker though. There we go. There's a there's a there's an elbow drop. This is probably the most offense Christian's gonna get in in this matchup. No, nope, up on his shoulders here. There you go. There's um there's some server problems. Good, good. Just how I like it. And Undertaker now. Oh, look at how Christian's body there reacted to that clothesline. And here we go. Rile it up again. Choke slam number two. And now, now Undertaker is ready to deliver that final blow. Undertaker has Christian in his grasp. Thanks for coming. Rest in peace. Tomb Stone Pile Driver. Welcome back to Monday Night Raw, Undertaker. And dismay for Christian as he suffers yet another loss. Welcome back, Taker. In the eyes of some, you have been sorely missed. Victory there for Undertaker. But wait, wait, wait. here comes Kane. Kane is here. Good God Almighty, the Undertaker's brother is attacking him. I made a little reference to Mordecai, but apparently they've taken that seriously. The brood, at least Kane, does not like the return of his brother, the man he held a world tag team title with. Kane now going right after the Phenom. Look at the strength there of Kane, belly to belly suplex, as if he was made out of nothing. I, have, I, I don't know what to say to this. Undertaker makes a triumphant return to the Raw brand and is instantly felt the wrath of the, of the demon. Oh no, the big red monster now with Undertaker in its grasp. Choke slam for Taker. My goodness. Clearly, there is more to it between these two than we originally thought. Undertaker's return, not just a simple welcome back already thrown into the fray with his brother Kane. I would assume next week Mordecai is going to have a thing or two to say about this. Keep your eyes about you for that one. But that is not the return Undertaker envisioned. Well, welcome back Taker, I guess. But Kane is the one having the last laugh here tonight. Alright, so with that being said, we're going to move on now to our next contest. It's, uh, Tag team time as the Revolution takes on Blake and Murphy, accompanied by their new associate, Alexa Bliss. Well, some things you just don't envision happening, and I didn't envision the return of Undertaker, and then the attack from Kane. My oh my, that was that was something else to um, to witness. Who knows what we're gonna see? I, I'm a uh, I'm already interested, actually, in what we are going to see developing from this over the next few weeks or however long it'll be. But right now, we focus on tag team action. James Storm of the Revolution heads towards the ring to do battle with Blake and Murphy. Last week, of course, it became official that Blake and Murphy belong to Monday Night Raw. And uh, obviously, they went from ECW. And trust me when I say I am totally fine with losing Blake and Murphy. They were not a, a difficult loss at all. In fact, I forgot I traded them away. That's how insignificant they are. But nevertheless, last week they stepped up to the plate and challenged the Bullet Club. And for some people saying, oh, look at how close they came. They almost beat the Bullet Club. No, no, no. No, they didn't. They did not come close to beating the Bullet Club at all. They hit their finishing maneuver and they kicked out. Plain and simple. There was no close. There was no close in that at all. In fact, when you uh, when you rewatch that clip, if you rewatch that match, you will realize that uh, it was Luke Gallows who laid out Blake or Murphy, one of the two. I wasn't really uh, paying attention, but um, he laid him out with the 12-step and then got the chair. The damage was already done. He was just sealing Blake and Murphy's fate and ended the matchup for sure. It's a DQ loss at the end of the day, but who cares? It's not like Blake and Murphy were ever a threat to the Bullet Club or were ever going to be able to topple the good brothers that are Gallows and Anderson. In fact, no one, we know this already, no one 
can topple the Good Brothers. And clearly, it's not going to be the Brood anytime soon, because they're too interested in their own means. Involved, for whatever reason now, with The Undertaker. So for a while, it's going to be a... Uh, a safe working environment on Raw. Because no idiots will be trying to challenge the Bullet Club. And if they do try and put up a threat, they're going to be ignited and just thrown back down to the bottom of the barrel almost as quickly as they try to get up there. But here come the dubstep duo, the fucking weirdos, the failures, the insignificant duo. The turd trio. I don't know. I, 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 my insults are terrible, as you can uh, envision already. But um, I'm already bored looking at Blake and Murphy. Now that's the effect they've left on me. They are. They are head bobbing. It, it's just terrible. What they are about to do. This. That, that's something a girl does. And I'm. And last week we were supposed to be afraid of these two. Now, they're now Blake's pretending to be an aeroplane. Why were we supposed to be afraid of these two again? Why Why are these two a, a, big, a threat to the Bullet Club for whatever reason? Why are they being alluded to? I, I no, genuinely, I would love to know the answer because I, I just don't understand how you can say these two are a threat. I'm more scared of Alexa Bliss than what I am Blake and Murphy combined. Maybe that's why uh, Alexa Bliss is with them. They begged, uh, they begged Bliss. They're like, oh, please, we need to come across as a, as, a, as a scary team. Can you come with us, please? Anyway, off the bat, you actually, Blake's gone off to a little bit of an interesting start there against Storm, but it's quickly uh, ceased there. And Storm sending Blake into his own turnbuckle, just for the shits and giggles, I would assume. And is now going to send him into his own turnbuckle. Blake's back there colliding with the turnbuckle pads as he tags in Drew Galloway early on here. Revolution, who have failed in the past again in the chance to capture those World Tag Team titles. And that's why I say uh, there is no threat for the Bullet Club right now. No one, uh, every team on this roster that has stepped up to the Bullet Club has failed. And the teams that haven't have failed against teams that have failed. The Raw Tag Team Division is basically non-existent. There's the Bullet Club, and that's it. There are other people thinking they're in a team. There is no competition. There is no ranking. There is no contendership. What there are are the Bullet Club and a bunch of losers. A bunch of insignificant morons who think that by teaming up together, they can topple Carl Anderson and Luke Gallows. You keep telling yourself that, boys. I mean, we witnessed the longest reigning ECW champion of all time be unable to stop the Bullet Club. That's all I'm saying. You didn't see, uh, you didn't see Michael Bennett forcing Gallows or Anderson to tap out, did you? Nope. So, if the longest reigning ECW champion couldn't do it, why does everyone suddenly think Blake and Murphy can? Is beyond me. Murphy, meanwhile, got tagged in in, the, in the, uh, the midst of that. Drew Galloway here fighting back clothesline there. Down goes Murphy. I would say this should be a walk in the park for uh, the Revolution, but the last time there was a matchup that was perceived to be a walk in the park for them, it took them about 20 minutes to defeat their opponents. Sunset Flip here doesn't go for the cover after because he's stupid. Galloway there with a good uh, good dodge there. Out of the way now of Murphy. German suplex. Impressive bridge as well by Galloway, but it only secures a one count. Tag made now. In comes James Storm. Galloway breaching the rules a little bit. Storm now the legal man and punched right in the gut there. Oh, good God. The strength now of James Storm just taking control of Murphy. Batting him around there as if he was nothing. Good counter, though by Murphy, wrong corner but you know, good counter and now uh, James Storm is going to get a sunset flip because it's apparently one of five moves that uh, Blake, uh, that Murphy even actually knows and the other four all have something to do with crying 
be interesting to see if Alexa Bliss chooses to get involved on the outside. Uh, not out of the question for Alexa Bliss. I mean, you know, she, she might be thinking, she might be focusing more on that triple threat match she's got next week, but of course she is still trying to cheer on her boy. She had a victory here tonight, and she may get involved should things go downhill for Blake and Murphy. James Storm sends Murphy into the turnbuckle. Got them both there with that move. Good recovery, though, by Blake on the outside, but Murphy certainly unable. Oh, nice kick in the gut, though. Went for a Shining Wizard there, and all it took was a little teeny-weeny sidestep for uh, Murphy, for James Storm even to get out of the way of that one. Punches in the ribs now. Three of them for good measure. Murphy in a lot of trouble there as James Storm has his way. And certainly is proving just that. And there's the involvement of Bliss. Finally, having something to say to the face of James Storm. Storm, though, the former tag team champion, turning his back in a reverse DDT for his troubles, courtesy of Murphy. If I was Murphy right now, I'd make the tag into Blake, in all honesty. Storm is starting to get a bit fired up, and you might wind up in a little bit of trouble. Shining Wizard now on its way. No running. Kick in the chest, though. Bliss uh, bringing a steel chair into the ring. Will that be used to anyone's advantage? Maybe so. Murphy on the outside now. Storm brings that one back in. That chair just kind of sitting there right now. No one using it. And once more, Storm getting a bit cocky. Sending him into his corner. And Blake tags himself in now. A little bit of confusion between the duo. They certainly did not uh, want that to happen. But Blake now taking control what he can. Referee! Oh, the referee was distracted by Bliss. And Blake drives the chair into the chest of James Storm. I thought for a second the referee was going to see that one, but he didn't. And this matchup continues on here. Good work by Bliss, it has to be said. She got involved at the perfectly right time. And now the referee getting that chair out of the ring before it can be used for something else. Probably for the best. Oh! Is that a leaping clothesline? I think it was. Oh, well, there's uh, James Storm in a move of his own. They're running double axe handle. Damn near took off Blake's head. Blake now going to roll up Storm. But Storm's arms are in the ropes. Well done. Uh, Blake just elbowed thin air there. And finally, it seems Storm is going to be able to make the tag here into Drew Galloway. Revolution got something in mind. This is looking... Like it's going to do some damage flying shoulder tackle by Galloway. With the assistance there coming from James Storm. And a reverse suplex for Blake's troubles. You can certainly see though Storm is feeling the effect of the job done there by Blake and Murphy. As he hangs on to the, ape, uh, to the, uh, the ring there. Or the ropes even. To try and stay up. Blake now off the second rope. Elbow drop. Certainly seems as if Blake and Murphy... Since arriving on Raw, have got some newfound fight in them. And are able to take it to the former tag team champions. Blake now. Oh, here we go. Irish whip in the corner goes uh, Drew Galloway here. Galloway in big trouble. Tag made, it may be. And it's looking like it. Blake has him in place. Brain buster. Murphy going to fly. Frog splash. The combination strikes and that should secure victory for the revolution. James Storm unable to do anything on the outside. Too exhausted. And Blake and Murphy are victorious over the revolution. Well, there you go. How about that? How about that indeed? It's a win for Blake and Murphy. And Alexa Bliss certainly played her part in giving these two men the win. But at the end of the day, what these two men need to realize, it is nothing more than that. It is just a win. It's not going to help them in the rankings. It's not going to make them look like more of a threat for the Bullet Club. It's just a win and nothing more. Blake and Murphy can try and celebrate this all they want, but they will be put right back into shape before they know it, courtesy of uh, the Bullet Club. Speaking of the Bullet Club, we're about to have the best part, one of the best parts of Raw take place. As for the third week in a row, let us be graced by the words of the World Heavyweight Champion, Dolph Ziggler. Ziggler apparently with a lot to say regarding Bullet Club business, perhaps a bit to say on his, uh, some of his opponents as well. Certainly a model by the name of Tyler Breeze, who has not been seen 
Stevenson's over the limit. Without further ado, let's go to the world champ. Ah, here he is. Here to save Raw again. Dolph Ziggler, everyone. Give it up for the work this man does. Saving our brand every... Saving this torrid, torrid brand. He's already done his job of saving it by winning that world title at... Uh, at Over the Limit. And now Ziggler continues to be the driving force as to why Raw is picking up ratings each and every time. Because of what he holds in his hand and what he has around his waist. Everyone excited to see the world champion, even if it's only for a minute or two when he's got a few things to say. So that being said, Dolph Ziggler getting right to the chase right there, talking about Paige and how she's going to walk out tonight with that women's championship. Absolutely no problem at all. Rosemary, Rosemary is just a scary face and nothing more. Paige is the real deal. Paige is Bullet Club. Because of that, Paige is the best woman there is out there. And now... Ziggler talking about the leader of the Bullet Club. Dolph Ziggler. And how, uh, uh sorry, wow, sorry, Adam Cole. Uh, there we go, I got a bit Dolph Ziggler in my mind, but, uh, Cole's uh, stating that Cole is still ready, still planning out the next stage of the Bullet Club's operation, and Zack Ryder can continue to chalk up those lucky days. He gets to be a placeholder for Adam Cole. And there it is. We were wondering when he'd be brought up. Tyler Breeze brought into the equation now. Ziggler stating that he's defending his world championship next week, as we all know. And even if Tyler Breeze steps up to the plate, they won't make a difference. Ziggler, though, knows Breeze isn't going to show up. He's too scared to face the world champion. He's too scared of the man who ruined his career in one swift zigzag. And to finish the deal there... To all those stupid enough to doubt the Bullet Club, pay attention tonight. Pay attention next week. Pay attention to when Adam Cole recaptures that United States Championship. The Bullet Club is undefeatable, unstoppable, and undeniably the reason why Monday Night Raw still stands. Why democracy now stands around Monday Night Raw. If not for the Bullet Club, this place would have died a long time ago. And for that, you are oh so welcome. For all those people who want Ziggler to lose that World Championship next week, just remember, if Ziggler loses, Raw goes bye-bye because it'll be under control of a dictator once more and there'll be no one to save. Monday Night Raw from inevitable doom if the Bullet Club is eviscerated. Which, trust me, they won't be. Now we go backstage. Yes! There he is! There they are! Maybe I was lying. Maybe I was wrong. Who knows? Who cares? The Bullet Club getting the jump there on Blake. Murphy in to make the save. Ooh, how threatening. Quivering in my boots already. And just, just for a little bit of clarification for a second, that's not, a, that's not, you know, trying to scare someone away or anything along those lines. That is not what the Bullet Club does. That was simply putting someone in their place. Blake and Murphy becoming a little bit too outspoken, a little bit too big for their boots. And they are tiny boots as well. We need to remember that they should be fitting in. So, while that was, was the Bullet Club just delivering a little message. Just reminding them of their place, where they belong, and where they belong is beneath the Bullet Club. Absolutely. Totally fair thing there by the Bullet Club. If uh, Blake and Murphy don't want to be together, if they don't want to stand next to each other and, and protect each other's backs like they should be as a tag team, then that sounds like a them problem. That is a problem that they need to sort out in their own time. But oh, look at that title. Look at that champion. The women's champion, Paige, heads towards the ring here to defend her championship. She won that championship but over the limit. Finally pinning Becky Lynch and at the same time revealing, of course, that she was the fifth member of the Bullet Club. An absolutely dominant group that they are now holding three of the four raw titles with a fourth on the way of course we'd just like to remind you once more Zack Ryder you are nothing more than a placeholder champion and that championship soon enough will be on its way back to the Bullet Club whereas this championship right now is going to be staying with the Bullet Club past tonight and into the future
Best of luck. Be best of luck, Rosemary. I know you have a, a, a big temperament, and I know you are easily annoyed, but you're going to need it if you want to try and get through this matchup and hang on and retain. Uh, sorry, not retain, and win your title. I say your title as a bit of sarcasm, because this won't be your title. This will remain Paige's title for some time. Here we go. The bell rings, and we are underway here, and oh! Counter there by Rosemary. The last time these two women were in the same ring as each other, they teamed up to take on Gail Kim and Paige in a tag team. Uh, sorry, Gail Kim and Becky Lynch in a tag team matchup. Paige didn't make the tag into Rosemary. Plain and simple, why she didn't is because she couldn't rely on this girl. She couldn't rely on the insane ways of Rosemary. And would probably start some kind of satanic ritual in the middle of the match. Paige stuck on her own. Yes, yeah, she lost, but you know. She, made, she more than made up for it over the limit. So that's all that really matters. Rosemary there kicks out of one of that suplex. And even though she was able to um, deflect that uh, Harakarana earlier, she is not off to a strong start right now. Triple headbutts there by Paige. Looking to try and get something going here now. Finally, Rosemary with a bit of a counter, but Paige so quick to reverse her. Women's champion, it seems, just always one step ahead of one of the members of the Decay. And once more, this fallaway slam for Rosemary, almost into the turnbuckle there. Paige apparently finding it incredibly easy to just throw Rosemary around as if she's nothing. Fisherwoman suplex, great counter though by Rosemary of that Fisherman suplex. Can she win the women's title with it? No, she can't even secure a two count. Nice, re nice uh, camera work there with the ref's ass. Chop in the chest, though. Rosemary getting a little bit of offense going here. Will it result in anything? Spinning leg drop. My goodness, she has agility. Wow. Triangle choke your leg. Triangle choke. Effective move as well, but Paige does a really good job of getting out of it. Pushing Ro oh, Rosemary away and then just decking her there. Absolutely floored her with that, uh, whatever it was, that clothesline. And oh, there she go, floors again. And this one should be it. Paige Turner to wrap up an easy win. Paige, oh, so close. But Rosemary has struggled bad in this matchup. She is outmatched, it has to be said. She is outmatched and outclassed. By Rosemary, oh, sorry, by Paige even. Rosemary is never going to be able to outmatch Paige. Oh, and this is why the women's champion now. There it is, Rampage DDT. Thank you very much. And still, women's champion. There's one, there's two. Are you dumb? Rosemary, genuine question right now. Are, are you dumb? Well, apparently that seems to be the case because uh, for whatever reason Rosemary is trying to continue to fight back here despite the fact that she has totally lost this matchup. Oh, Paige is there having absolutely none now of Rosemary's attempts to fight back and I imagine as well Rosemary trying to do her hardest not to let down Mordecai but there is only so much you can do against Paige and you are seeing that taking shape right now there is a reason why she is in the bullet club there is a reason why she is your women's champion because there is no one who is better than Paige in this division rampage ddt once more that should secure the end of this one rosemary's head drilled there into the mat and the cover and this one is over two three Still your women's champion in a dominant display. Paige is victorious. Woo! Didn't even, doesn't even look like she broke a sweat. Your ever dominant women's champion. You're too sweet uh, to go along with it. Congratulations there to Paige on the Fellinger Championship. And without further ado, even though she has celebrated a victory there, can we, can we go to that... Uh, can we go to that graphic from last week? We are? Good. This, oh, look at that. That is a lovely, that is a, a beautiful sight 
to close out this Monday Night Raw. The five most dominant people on the Raw brand and the five people who are saving Monday Night Raw from falling to its depths. The Bullet Club once more showing their dominance, decking Blake and Murphy and retaining their Women's Championship. Congratulations to Paige there on defending a title. Adam Cole is going to be adding his second United States Championship to the mix very, very shortly. Don't you worry one bit. So there we go. That is the Bullet Club. That is the group who has saved Raw and created a democracy. That is going to end this episode of Monday Night Raw. That is going to end this episode of Universe, of course. Thank you guys for watching. See you next week for the world title defense. And um, now we move on to ECW. We don't even want to think about it. Anyway, I'll end this. Thank you guys for watching. Take it, guys. And ta -ra.